What does it mean when you say it's, when you say someone has a lot of energy? I have a lot of energy. What does that mean? Somebody like high energetic. Okay. You're energetic. What does it mean to be energetic? I can, oh, boom, you can do things, right? Energy is the ability, I heard it over here, ability to, to do things, to do work. There it is, the ability to do work. That's how we define energy, right? Work is, right here, we know it is the change in energy, right? So when you have a lot of energy, what if I have kinetic energy? What kind of, what, what am I doing? Yeah, I'm moving, I'm moving really fast, right? And if I, the faster I move, the more energy I have, all right? So uh, what does number one say on your, on your paper? It says what does it mean? What, is, what does energy mean, right? Or what is it? Uh, it's just the first uh, line. To do a lot of work. What does it mean to have a lot of energy, right? I want you to write the definition of, of work there, right? It means... You have a lot, the ability to do a lot of work if you have a lot of energy. All right, work, power, and energy. Work, we've talked about, is the change in energy. What is power? Does anybody have a guess? What do we like to add? We, right now we have mass and velocity, right? We have force and distance. What other units do we have in this, in this class? Power is what you yeah, power, you do, you can exert, exert power, but in this class, right, we want to add a unit time. Power is work divided by time, all right? And of course, we know energy is just the ability to do work, and work is the change in energy. Those two go back and forth. So let's continue here. I'll try to show you what I mean. So one of the things that we have to remember is, is, is if there is no motion, there is no work being done. All right, because what our equation is force times distance. If your distance is zero, there is no work being done, right? No matter what force you think you're observe, exerting, okay? So now let's talk, all right? For a force to work on an object, the force must be in the same direction. Let's talk vectors for a second, all right? If uh, the motion is horizontal, and my force is vertical. There is no work there because those two vectors aren't in the same direction. For you to have work, the force and the motion have to be in the same direction, all right? So here, obviously, we have work being done. Here, we have work being done. What do we have to do if we get vectors like this? It starts with a T, ends with an IG. Trigonometry. Trig yeah, it doesn't end with an inch. Yeah, trigonometry. We're going to have to do trigonometry here. I'll, I'll keep trig out of this unit for you. All right, here's number two on here. In which of the following cases is work being done on an object? You need to answer this on your PowerPoint slide there. <clears throat> Carrying your backpack down the hall. All right, is any work being done on the backpack? No. No, right? Carrying your backpack up the stairs. The backpack is getting more and more potential energy. So you have a change in energy. You have work being done on the backpack. Using a crane to hold a pile of bricks. Is any work being done on the bricks? Is there any motion of the bricks? So there's no work being done on the bricks. Pushing your car, which is stuck in the snow. You're pushing really hard, but the car is not moving. So is there any work being done on the car? No. no. All of those uh, besides B are examples. Go ahead and click forward. All right, besides B are examples of no work being done. All right, so this is what I was trying to explain, right? Lifting the box increases its potential energy, right? Because what is potential energy besides mass times the acceleration of gravity times the height that something is? That's its potential energy. You increase its height, you increase its energy. So you're doing work on the box because that's a change in energy. Go ahead and go to the next one. All right, law of conservation of energy. Energy changes forms, but the total amount of energy must be conserved. Energy is the transfer uh, by a force moving through an, an object's distance, right? That's where we get in the equation force equals work times distance. 
times the cosine of theta, right? If we need to do our trig, if it's not in the same direction. I try to keep it really easy for you and keep all the forces in the same direction, all right, as the movement. Uh, the work you do equals the energy transferred to the object, all right? That goes back to energy is conserved, right? If it moves from one to the other. We don't ever account for what we learned about in the last question, right? Entropy, right? Uh, we count it becoming less and less useful. We just count the work that we do goes into the object. Since work in metrics in joules, so is energy. Go ahead and go to the next one. All right, wind can make things move. Therefore, there is energy in the wind, right? Uh, the sun can make things hot. It can give us thermal energy. On your, on your paper, it asks, why are oil and gas such good energy sources? Does anybody know, can answer that? Yes, Landon. Yes, so come over here. All right, what did I draw over here? Well, it's labeled. What, what is this atom? There's a C in the middle, and I have four H's all around. Carbon and hydrogen. Yes, wow. carbon and four hydrogen. What is CH4? Methane. methane. This is methane. This is the most basic hydrocarbon. This is what every... Our entire economy in this in the Permian Basin is based on. All right, it is based on hydrocarbons. What is this? This is another hydrocarbon. What do you use to uh, heat your grill? Propane. propane. Propane is a hydrocarbon. I think propane has three carbons, right? All of these little lines are what? And I erased one here. Those are bonds. When burnt, they break. There is a lot of thermal energy in hydrogen bonds, right? So. Oil and gas are such good sources of energy because they have a lot of hydrogen bonds and they are, this is what you need to write down, energy dense. Those hydrogen, the number of hydrogen bonds make those fuels very energy dense, all right? Go ahead and go to the next slide. All right, so now let's talk about power, all right? Power is work divided by time. Here I have a bodybuilder and I have your average Jim, Jim over here, your average Joe, right? He takes 10 seconds to lift uh, this bar, you know, two meters, this 100 Newton pound bar. He takes one second. Who has more power? Like Michael. Yeah, big weightlifter Mike. He does it in less time. Therefore, he has less power or has more power, right? It is energy transfer divided by time, all right? That's, it's pretty basic, but it's really important. Our society needs power. We, we, we crave power. We wanna do a lot of work, right, in a short amount of time. Your engine has a lot of, we call it horsepower, right? All right, because it does a lot of work in a, in a short period of time. You could have the same engine that could move a car, but it would take a lot longer to move that car, right? Do you want that engine? No, you want to get from point A to point B in, you know, 10.6 seconds, right? Or whatever it is. You know, you want to go to 100 miles an hour in six seconds. What is a fast car nowadays? It gets to 60 in what? Point, what does a Tesla get to 60 miles per hour? I thought it was like one second now. They can really like 1.6 or something. Anyway, maybe, it's, maybe I'm wrong. But anyway, you want power. That's what makes society go. All right, let's talk about kinetic energy. All right, kinetic energy is the energy of motion. Kinetic itself means motion, right? Uh, the more mass something has, uh, the greater energy something has. The more velocity something has, the greater the kinetic energy. Why is that? Well, because our equation for kinetic energy, Ke equals one half mass times velocity squared. So I have this test question written up here, all right? Would you rather get hit, Mary? Would you rather get hit by a softball thrown by an Olympic pitcher moving at 22.3 meters per second, all right? And a softball weighing 0.1984 kilograms or a baseball thrown by uh, an ML MLB baseball pitcher, which a baseball is 0.145 kilograms, thrown at, and this is the equivalent of 100 miles an hour, this is 50 miles an hour, right? 44 meters per second, all right? That is a test question. I'm not gonna tell you the answer to that. I know the answer to this, all right? Uh, but you're gonna have to answer me. 
you're deciding which one of these has less energy, you're gonna use this equation, kinetic energy equals one half mass times velocity squared. All right, velocity matters a great deal to our kinetic energy because of y. Look at that equation. Why does velocity, this v, change our energy so drastically? Because what do we do to the v? Square it. Yeah, we square it, all right? So the impact velocity has uh, to our energy really, you know, distorts, right? Because we square it, our energy equation. That's why asteroids, right? You hear about these planet killers. Not only do we have to look at the mass of the asteroid that's coming towards us, right? We have to look at the velocity. If something is moving really, really fast, say the speed of light, right? C squared, right? We got that equation uh, E equals MC squared, mass times velocity squared. If something gets really close to the speed of light, right? Even if it has a small mass, it can still blow up the entire planet because it has so much energy due to its tremendous velocity, all right? So velocity is really connected, right? That kinetic motion is connected to our energy equation and has an outsized impact because it is squared. Uh, let's go into potential energy. Potential energy. When we're talking about gravitational potential energy, we're talking about uh, MGH, mass times the acceleration due to gravity. That's our little g right, times our height. We also have elastic energy, right? That's this slingshot guy. We pull it back, right? Then that we have that spring, right? And we can let an object go. We have the ability to uh, turn something from stationary into kinetic energy, right? So we think of potential energy as stored energy, right? Stored energy, energy due to the position of an object. Doing work on an object gives it potential energy, right? So if I pull an object back, right, I'm giving it in a bow, I'm giving it potential energy, therefore I'm doing work when I'm pulling that bow and arrow back. Like a rubber band? Yes, just like a rubber band. Go ahead and go to the next slide. So physics love to ask questions about swings, right? When a point on a swing do I have the most potential energy? Yeah, A, when my height is the greatest. When are you moving the fastest on a swing? B. Yeah, B. At the very, very bottom, you all your potential energy is now converted into kinetic, so you're moving the fastest. And then when you ride the swing up, you slow down, you slow down. What is happening? Well, your kin kinetic energy is converting into potential, and then you're going to come back and move the fastest at the bottom, Convert that kinetic energy into potential, and you're gonna go again, all right? This is always a test question. Make sure we understand uh, the swing. So, the effects of our potential energy, right? It can be mass affected, it can be height affected. Here, the blue skier, right? If they both weigh 500 newtons, all right? He has more potential energy. Here, if they're at the same height, the green skier has more because he has more mass, right? Uh, he has a higher weight. We can go ahead and go to the next. The bowling ball, the same way. All right, go to the next one. There's a little cartoon. Uh, we'll play it another time. Go ahead and go next. Yes. Hit it again. All right, so kinetic energy, movement energy. Keep on going. This is our equation. We should have it down in our notes. Uh, we should have it uh, on our unit one divider. Or sorry, unit five divider, unit one divider. We should have it on a divider. We should know that V is velocity measured in meters per second. Mass is measured in kilogram. We should know that the change in potential energy is mg and the change in height, right? G is the acceleration due to gravity. On the test, make sure you see what to use for gravity. We know it is 9.81. Here, they're going to say 10 meters per second, so you can do it in your head. Make those calculations easy is fine. All right, go ahead and go to the next one. Make sure we have those formulas. All right, so we talked about weight once be before, right? What is your weight? Mass, your mass times gravity, right? We remember, what does FMA stand for? FMA, JK Ma, I love you. Yes. Mass times acceleration equals your force. So how do I calculate work 
from, if I have a force, what do I need? It starts with a D. Distance. distance, yeah. If I have a force, I need a distance, then I can calculate energy, all right? So uh, make sure you understand all of your weight and your force from our previous unit. All right, on this one, I wrote down, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. One bite at a time. That's the answer on your, on your slide. It says, how do you eat an elephant? It's one bite at a time, okay? First step, you write down what's given. Second step, write down the correct equation. Third step, you plug it in, plug it in, right? You're a blade refreshener. Fourth step, you solve and you include your units. All right, for your exit ticket, you're gonna do the last two, number two and number three. I'm gonna do number one for you. And if I have an eraser, I'll do it on this board over here. I'll just use my sleeve. All right. So, I'm doing number one, a 50 kilogram boy. So, I'm given 50 kilograms, right? So I have a what? I have a mass of 50 kilograms, all right? He said he went jogging. He ran at a rate of five meters per second. And then it said, how much kinetic energy did he have? I'm looking for my kinetic energy. So I know my equation, Ke equals one half times my mass times velocity squared. I plug it in, 50 is my mass. So I have one half times 50 times five squared. Five squared, make sure you do your PEMDAS, is 25. What is one half times 50? 25. 25 squared, those of you who paid attention in your third grade, squares, right, is 625. What is my unit for energy? Joules, all right? So the answer to number one is 625 joules, all right? That's how much kinetic energy the boy had when he went jogging. You are gonna do number two and number three. Put it on your exit ticket. Once you finish with the exit ticket, replace it with your phone and you are done for the day. All right, I hope you learned a little bit about work, energy, and power.